I would just like to say so sorry to those of you that like to watch my videos each week that I haven't uploaded one in a while. Really has been a fair few weeks now. I can't even remember it's been that long. Um, but yeah, I'm back now and got lots going on in the next few weeks. So thank you so much for your support and encouragement. Simply watching these videos I upload makes my day. And it is nice to know that Books, Dresses and Teacups has regular visitors. Through comments and communications about the things that I upload, whether that be in the comments below or chatting to me in the real world, RC and Jenny, it really does make you a big part of this channel. So thank you so much for being here. It has been a while since I have uploaded because I have been pouring all of my energy into either going to work or video editing. Megan and I are looking for a butterfly adventure while trying to, not often enough though, to help mum organise her house since the Renaults are almost done. That's for another day. So yeah, if I'm not at work, I'm on my parents' couch in my pyjamas wearing my purple headphones, only ever resurfacing for tea, food and to join in on one of their arguments or if something grabs my attention on the TV. And on weekends, I'm on that, well I was, on that couch morning till night. Nah more like midnight till early hours of the next morning. I work better at night. I know most morning people don't understand this, but us night owls, our creative brains come alive at night. So I am pleased to say that the looking for a butterfly adventure videos are all finished, which is why I needed to upload this video today, just to let everyone know that for the next nine weeks, I will be uploading a video every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Melbourne time, Melbourne, Australia time which I'm not too sure what that would be for the rest of the world. I think England is probably... Oh, I should know this because my family live there. If it's 6 p.m. here, I think it's like 9 a.m. there maybe. I don't know because of the um, daylight savings and stuff that often changes from 9 to 11 hours difference, I think. Anyway. I understand that these travel vlogs will not be for everyone, so if you are a subscriber to Books, Dresses and Teacups for just one specific thing like crafts, books or up shop hauls, or even my pink kitchen, or simply just because of my tea house, I will not be offended if you have to leave my channel. I would love for you to stay and just unclick that notification bell button so the notifications of Megan and I's adventures won't bother you because I will be back in 10 weeks time with lots of new videos. I have a pile of books to talk about that I've read this year. I have piles of thrifted books for another thrifted book haul. I have some op shop upcycles to do and best of all, mum and dad's house is almost finished. So there will be a lot to see over there soon, including some befores and afters and a house tour. Speaking of tour, it is almost the tea house's second birthday and because I did a tour on the opening of the tea house and then a tour on its first birthday, just so then you can see the progress and things that have changed in the tea house, I do um, upgrade areas every now and then. <laughs> Not really, I mean it's mostly the same but a few things are different. So I will be doing another tea house tour soon. I might miss Halloween with all these videos going up, but I will also be giving that spider Oreo cake another go. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out my two Halloween videos. Every year I try and do this Oreo spider cake and <laughs> I always fail at it. Hopefully, fingers crossed this year I can make it good. Might need mum's help for this. Anyway, before I go, I wanted to talk about two books that I read a while ago now. So back in my online book haul video, I asked viewers, out of all the books that I've shown you today, I am going to let you decide which one I read first. The first person to comment with the book that I should read first out of all the ones I've shown you today in today's haul. Um, yeah, which one sounds the most interesting that you would like me to read first? So RC commented first with a book that was recommended by her, and that was The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. It was a while ago that I read this and I'm quite annoyed with myself that I cannot string together the words of how I felt throughout this powerful story about two sisters and their lives in occupied France. I have just put too much pressure on myself for my thoughts on this book. Just say what you thought Kelly, it isn't that hard. But it is because I can't remember what I thought other than it broke my heart. 
Like most war stories, the devastation and cruelty and violence and brutality have you on the edge of your seat with rage. Why did this happen? Why, why, why? If it were not for the resilience and love and hope and courage of the people in these stories, we would be like a deflated balloon with no air left to float after reading them. What separates The Nightingale from most other war stories I have read is how it emphasises women's war efforts. I have read a lot of bad reviews about this book, all focusing on the minute details where there were simple errors that were somehow missed by the author and editors, or that Kristen Hannah didn't do her research well, which I must admit can be frustrating, but I think those reviews are so focused on the errors and the negative stuff that they forgot to acknowledge the overall point of the story. It celebrates women in wartime, their strength, their will, their courage, their love, their determination, and not just from one angle either, which is what I loved most about this book, that it showed various struggles of what women went through during World War II in occupied France. So through the character Vian, I think that's how you pronounce it, in my head while reading I was calling her Vian, but I think it might be Vian. Vian? Vian? I am. Anyway, I'm going to call her Vianne. Through the character Vianne, a reserved, quiet character, we can feel her struggles as she tries to protect the ones she loves by keeping her head down and out of trouble, burying all her anger and frustrations with what she's enduring in an effort to keep her daughter safe. And then there is her younger sister Isabel, who is fierce, fearless and stubborn, but incredibly brave who struggles to do right by her sister by standing up for what she believes in and rebelling against the Nazis, which at times landed her in trouble, putting her family in danger. Isabel didn't want to join this hopeless, helpless crowd of women and children and old people, while the young men were away, dying for them at the front. If I have learned anything in this long life of mine, it is this. In love, we find out who we want to be, in war, we find out who we are. And that is the opening sentence, which looking back after finishing the book, I can understand that opening line so much more. In war, we are either a fighter or a survivor. And in this story, the two sisters, Bian, Bian, and Isabel, are one or the other. But as the story evolves, so do the characters. And at times, there were glimpses of the sisters adopting each other's ways. Amidst all the horrors of this World War II story is the ambivalent love between two sisters. Sisters who are so diverse in character that it caused friction between them. But through war and terror, the sisters find their love is their biggest strength. Isabel's fiery heart reminded me of a historical figure whose story is one of my favourites, Nancy Wake. The woman the Nazis called the White Mouse. The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna may be a piece of fiction, but it represents women like Nancy Wake and their bravery and determination to make a difference and to resist the forces of evil. It is a piece of history weaved into a work of art, highlighting the struggles of women in wartime and inspiring us with their courage and strength. So thank you, RC, for recommending that book to me. I am actually excited for my mum to read it. She's in the middle of reading Robbie Williams' biography at the moment, or autobiography, whatever it is. Um, so after that, I am going to tell her to read this one. Thanks, Rach. Them. <laughs> and I'm freezing my hand because I burnt myself. Then I went on to read The Great Alone, another great book by Kristen Hanna. 
weather like this brought out the darkness in her father. It is 1974 and 13-year-old Lenny is preparing herself to move to Alaska with her parents. But her father hasn't been the same since he returned home from the Vietnam War. The war had left a mark embedded so deep within Ernst Albright, it had created a monster. And Lenny knew her father's tormented soul was eating him alive. Which is why the line, weather like this brought out the darkness in her father, that came a few sentences after the mention of the dog-eared paperback copy of Watership Down, if not a coincidence, was bloody genius. If you are familiar with the story Watership Down, you will be aware of the rabbit Fiverr, who sensed the approach of some intangible danger and was constantly worrying. For Lenny, the danger she knew was the ticking time bomb that was her father, and going to live in a place like Alaska, with unpredictable and unforgiving winters, where most people who dreamed of living there wouldn't survive their first winter, would speed up the ticking until tick 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 five out of every thousand people went missing in alaska every year were lost that was a known fact they fell down crevices lost their way on trails drowned in rising tide lenny sensed a looming darkness they were moving to alaska the great alone as the reader, you could sense the question both Lenny, her mother and grandmother were all thinking. How could they survive alone with Ernt through an Alaskan winter? In this town that was called the coldest in America. It wasn't a suspenseful page-turning narrative. However, as I turned the pages, I felt myself creeping across eggshells with Lenny, waiting in the dreaded shadows of the little Alaskan house for him to explode and throw grenades of fury at anyone in his way. Lenny's mother would feel the blow, protecting Lenny from the blast, but Lenny would still be sent flying from the power of the explosion, and watching her mother be beaten, then accept his compliments only hours later, broke Lenny's heart. The tank wheel her mother was riding on, the repetitive, tormented life that was her mother's, it was tearing Lenny apart. Was she to break free of her parents' drama and leave her mother to survive her father alone? But was she supposed to be trapped forever by her mother's choice and her father's rage? But between her father's violent outbursts, we are given front row seats to life in Alaska. The relentless winters, but the remarkable beauty of an Alaskan summer, and the many intriguing heartwarming characters the family meet along the way. The characters who soon become family, the people who become home to Lenny. And then of course, a friendship that blossoms into something so much more. I think this story left a little imprint on my reading soul. I have never visited Alaska, but reading this book has left me feeling like I have. They say travel broadens the mind. I believe that to be true, but I think a book containing a powerful story can send you around the world and back again from your own couch making you feel as though you have lived it. This book is brilliant. Two dollars from the op shop, well spent. <laughs> yeah, so there is nothing else much to report since I've been really flat out with video editing and work. This is my video editing space. So this is where I have spent most of my time while editing these videos for the last, since June, since towards the middle of June. And yes, yeah, so here comes my secretary. No, what are you called? Here comes my um, my assistant. <laughs> she brings me cups of tea because she knows I'm working hard, trying to get all this done so I can dedicate all of my time to helping her get this house finished. But yes, so I am just. Believe it when it happens, peeps. Yeah, it's nearly there. I'm right now on the last day, currently editing day 20 and 21, which is going to take two days because of the amount of scurrying back into previous videos and, you know, all that palaver. A lot of, a lot of um, little edits in this one, little cuts and trims and sticking things in and I'm living like a grot. I mean, lockdown has helped a lot because... I don't have to leave the house to go and socialise with people. So um, lockdown's helped a lot, but I haven't 
all I've been doing is going to work and, and sitting here. So I haven't had time. I've given myself no time whatsoever for exercise or anything like that. I, I haven't been able to concentrate on eating healthy. I've been living off snacks, naughty sugary snacks. So I, I am actually really happy that I'm almost finished and um, I can get back to living my old life. <laughs> I'm just living a mess. Look at that, Mum. I've just cluttered up your land. I <laughs> I'm usually a neat and tidy person, but when I'm dedicated to something like a massive project like this, I don't care about anything else. All I'm doing is I'm in the zone, unless I get distracted by Mr. Ballin on YouTube. And I've been sleeping on that, sleeping on that manky old mattress right in hey, front of the not fire. A <laughs> It's just you and the dog make the bloody sheep monkey. Hey, you're not me. I'm not yes. that grotty. I know that I haven't been taking good care of myself because I'm too busy in there, but I'm not that grotty. Yeah, it's the dog. Muddy paws. Um, and I'm sleeping here in front of the fire. I haven't been at the tea house really, have I, Mum? No. Why not? Because you scared yourself. <laughs> Excuse me, who scared themselves? More like Donna put something on that terrified me. Well, I didn't know it was going to scare you like that. I thought you bloody watched him. I do. Okay. Mr. Ballin on YouTube, I watch him because he's a good, really good storyteller and he tells you all that dark and mysterious true stories. But I watched the ones where it was like um, how people have died in freaky ways. Um, you know, like nothing like ghosts and all that and then you put on a ghost one and terrified me after that and mm. ghost stories about the forest and because mm. the tea house is right next to a forest i've been staying over here well, you did have your headphones on you weren't supposed to be listening <laughs> can't help it when he's on he's so interesting camping out at mum and dad's until i'm brave enough to go home nah that's my excuse but the real reason is because i've set up my camp here and i can't be bothered Dragging everything back over the tea house and the wood fire. And of course. You may be saving us in electric curl, but you're costing us in fucking wood. <laughs> Look what mum's working on. It's absolutely stunning. Give you a little sneak peek of two things that are going on over here, which is a preview to future videos because soon enough this house will be finished and we can do Donna Ray's house tour. Mm -hmm. Hosted by Donna. Are you excited? I won't get me up so, until it starts happening. Mum, I've tell you, got it, one video left to do. It's still looking like this come Christmas. The Christmas tree ain't coming out again for a second year. You said, that's not what you said to me last time. You said if you're not done by Christmas, oh, you're getting rid of all your Christmas decorations. No, no. no you won't. You're not going to get rid of the Christmas decorations, Heather, got you? No, it's not the sentimental ones, but everything else will go. No, it won't. You're not going to no. get them out because your house looks like this. It's not going to look like this forever. But it feels like forever, Kelly. I know it does. And then what you have done looks crap now because it's fucking dirty and... Well, that's what happened at the tea house. All the, the tiled floors looked like an absolute horrible mess. And then on the last few nights, I had to scrub them all, hands and knees, to get it crystal clean again. Anyway, got to get back to it. My dirty little grubby area. You're cleaning. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have time to do anything other than work and edit. I want it done, that's why. I can't, I can't sacrifice any other time. I can't sacrifice any time because I want to get it done. I must have a little break. You've made me a cup of tea. It's tea break time. All right, let's get on with this. This is just the start of day 20. Working on it now. Oh. Oh, I did get a bit addicted to um, watching the YouTuber Mr. Ballin while editing videos on the couch at Mum and Dad's. The first few I watched weren't very scary, but once Mum started watching all the ghostly and creepy things in the forest ones, I couldn't help but listen 
which I shouldn't have been listening but couldn't help myself while I was on my laptop. Well, I have been terrified of the night ever since. Still trying to get over it. I have been sleeping at mum and dad's house until the fear fades. Living in the middle of nowhere next to a forest hasn't helped the situation. But if you are a fan of the dark and mysterious, Mr. Boland's true creepy stories are for you. But if you are likely to get scared like I do, I will not recommend him as I am still suffering the consequences myself. Sometimes my curiosity does me no good. Anyway, I hope you are all well and staying safe and we'll see you again very soon with the Looking for a Butterfly Adventure, which I am really excited for. I'm just so excited for you all to come with us on this epic quest. I have turned Megan and I's Northern Queensland adventure, seriously, into a series and each episode has been the most fun to put together and bring to life, even though it has taken an incredibly long time. June, July and it's now August, nearly two and a half months it's taken me. But they were really worth every minute, especially now that I have stepped up in the creator's world and now have a subscription to use music that isn't just from YouTube Audio Library. Don't get me wrong, YouTube Audio Library does have great music. Yeah, I just needed something new. I was tired of always using the same music for my videos. And having epidemic sound with thousands of songs and sound effects, it made the editing process so much fun. If it were not for that, I wouldn't have felt as inspired as I did to put these videos together. And now they are done and I'm so happy to have them always to look back on and for others to maybe enjoy too. I will warn you, there is lots of swearing that happens every now and then. Megan and I can't seem to help ourselves when we are together and on one of the days I couldn't even sugarcoat it because we would lose the authenticity of the story of that day. You'll know what I mean when you see it. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone. Um, see you soon. Well you will see me and my childhood buddy Megan. See yous. Thanks for watching. Bye. And then there is her younger sister Isabel, who is... And then there is her younger sister Isabel. And then there is her younger sister Isabel, who is fierce, Fearless.